Hello bio again and welcome back to our genotype to phenotype conversation and this is building off of the previous lesson where I talked you through how your genotype determines your phenotype and we're going to practice this using those bioflowers that we talked about in the last lesson. So there are a number of things that we are going to be working through today. If you have already downloaded the documents or have access to them on the computer, great. Um, you can work through this on the worksheet itself or grab a piece of spare paper, uh, whatever works for you. The first thing that I'd like you to do or that I'd like to do is to walk you through all of the different pieces that you're going to be using. So you're going to be looking at three different documents today. The first one is this guy right here, the Investigating Genotype to Phenotype Bioflower Colors. And that's where we're going to be doing the majority of our work. You also are going to be using the DNA to amino acid codon wheel, which you saw at the very, very end of the lesson last time, but I'll walk you through how to use it. And you're also going to be looking at the bioflowers key. And what this will do is it will walk you through the pigmentation pathway as well as the different amino acid sequence, what the cartoon shapes of those enzymes are, and the functionality of those enzymes. So if you don't have everything ready, go ahead and pause the video really quick and get the things that you need. You can also just use um, or follow along with me and pause the video whenever you need to. So back to this investigating genotype to phenotype document where we're going to be working with these bioflowers. There are three parts. The very first part that we're going to go through is this part. We are going to be looking at the uh, DNA sequences of each of these alleles and converting that into an amino acid sequence. And the, this happens in each and every single one of our cells. So our cells know how to read our DNA and make proteins. And you learned about that with Mr. Kowalki in our lesson on DNA to protein. After we uh, go through the coding for the three alleles that make up gene A and the three alleles that make up gene B, we're going to do part B. I'm sorry, part two. And part two is this guy down here. We're going to use the protein key that I showed you earlier and we'll show you again to match those amino acid sequences that we just determined to the shape of each of the proteins. We'll determine if the protein is functional or non-functional and how we know that. And then part three, this looks like a lot, but it's okay. Part three is where we are going to be looking at these different protein pathways, drawing the enzymes and the pigment molecules present in the cells of each type of flower based on the alleles that they have for each of the two genes. So the first thing that I want to do is talk quickly about the uh, color pathway or the pigmentation pathway for these imaginary flowers. So our flowers can either be white, blue, or red. There is an enzyme that is coded for by gene A, or allele, the three alleles for gene A, that converts those colorless molecules into blue pigment. And then there is another gene, gene B, that codes for enzyme B, that converts those blue pigments into red pigments. So our flowers can be white, blue, or red. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back up to part A and start working through our DNA to amino acid sequence. Now this wheel is really, really cool because it is a very organized way of looking at what each and every single possible three uh, codon or the three nucleotide sequences which amino acid they code for. So our amino acid sequence here, AGG, we 
we look at our wheel here, we start with A, we go one out to G, one more to G, and we can see that that three nucleotide sequence codes for the amino acid arginine. And we can abbreviate that as ARG, or ARG. So we go back to our document and we type in, or write in, ARG. Now, many of you may be wondering the quick wardrobe change. I have learned how to edit videos because I made a mistake in the last one. Whoops, so cool with our students. Be super proud of me right now. Next up, the next um, nucleotide sequence, the three nucleotides we have are T, T, G. So we go over to our wheel, T, T, G. That codes for leucine, abbreviated L-E-U. Next up, G, G, C. So we look at G. One out, go to G, one more, go to C, and we can see that those three nucleotides code for glycine, which can be abbreviated GLY. Next up, GGG. Let's go back to our wheel starting with G, one out G, one more out G, again, glycine. Now we have GGT, G, one out G, one out T, again glycine, GLY. Now at this point you might start to wonder if this is one of those scenarios where like on a Scantron test and you've gotten five C's in a row and you're starting to wonder if you've done something wrong. Don't worry about that. There are lots of nucleotide sequences that can code for the same amino acids, so don't worry. Next up, we have GAA. So if we go back to our Gs, but now we're gonna go off to A. And A, that's glutamic acid, which we can abbreviate as GLU. Next up is CTT, our first C. So we're starting with C over here, going to T, going to T. That's leucine, abbreviated L-E-U. Last but not least is T-G-C. So T, one more out G, one more out C, and that is cysteine, abbreviated C-Y-S. So now we've done the first amino acid sequence for allele A1 together for the gene A. What I'd like you to do is go ahead and pause the video and write out the amino acid sequences for allele A2 and A3 of gene A and the allele, or sorry, the amino acid sequences for gene B's three alleles. So allele B1, allele B2, and allele B3. And then we can come back and check our work. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to go ahead and write out the rest of your amino acid sequences. I'd like to go over just a couple of them with you right now and you can check your work. Now allele two for gene A is a bit of a tricky one. So we start with the nucleotide sequence AGA, which when we look over at our wheel, we can see that A, oops, AGA codes for arginine which is abbreviated ARG or ARG, which is great. We write down ARG. And then we look at the next, which is TAG. So you look T, A, G, and that codes for a stop. Now in your cell, when your amino acid sequences are being put together by being read off of the DNA, when your cell gets to a stop codon, it does exactly that, it stops and then the amino acid sequence floats off to form itself up into a protein and go do its job. So luckily for you, that also means you get to stop and you don't have to continue um, taking those three nucleotide sequences and reading the codon wheel to figure out which amino acid it codes for. 
So we came to another stop codon here in allele 3 with TAA, which meant we could stop as well. So go ahead and take a minute and check your work, and we'll come back with part 2. So part two is where we start looking at the amino acid sequences that we have just read using our wheel and determining which protein shape they make. So for this, you're going to want to go to your key. So we've walked through the pigmentation pathway and we'll do so again in just a minute. But now we want to look at these amino acid, se or amino acid sequence keys and which cartoon shape of the protein it's going to make. So for allele A1, that's the first allele for gene A, it's arginine, leucine, gly, 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 glue, lu, cis, right? So we need to go find arginine, leucine, gly, 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 glue, lu, cis. And that's this guy right here. So the cartoon shape of that protein is this. So I'm just going to copy and paste it, but if you have it printed out, you can draw. So that is the cartoon shape of the protein made by this allele. Now, in determining whether or not it's functional or not, we have two resources available to us. The first is the function, which is listed right to the right of the cartoon molecule shape. And it says it converts the colorless molecule to the blue pigment molecule. Great. So that tells us it's functional. We can also look down and see that the active site for enzyme A is this box shape. When we go look up at the pigmentation pathway, we can see that the colorless molecule is basically a square. And as long as it has a boxed shape active site to fit into, it will be converted into that blue pigment molecule. So let's look at the shape of this amino acid sequence after it forms the protein. It has that box shape. So therefore, it is a functional protein. So we can say that it is functional and we can explain that along the lines of saying the active site on the enzyme is the correct shape for the molecule. All right, go ahead and pause here and work through the cartoon shapes for allele A2, A3, and B1, B2, and B3. All right, could you pause and have a look? Because we're going to go ahead and go over the answers right now. And I hope that helps. So here we have now the cartoon shapes for each of the three alleles for both gene A and gene B. And we've already gone through A1, so A1 kind of looks like a duck. It's a functional protein, and we know that it's functional because the shape of the active site fits the colorless molecule. Now A2, that's that tricky one where we had that stop sequence right at the very beginning. So there isn't actually even a protein being made. And then we have the shape for A3. We can tell that that's functional because, again, the shape of the active site fits the colorless molecule. B1 is our Pac-Man guy. We know it's functional because here the shape of the active site fits the blue molecule. So we're going to have to go back and remember our pigmentation pathways. Enzyme A, which is coded for by allele A1, A2, and A3, converts the colorless molecule into a blue pigment. Enzyme B needs to fit that blue pigment molecule to convert it to a red pigment. So the shape of the active site of the protein for, made from B1 fits that blue molecule and is able to convert it to red. B2 
B2 is non-functional, B3 is functional, because even though it's not the full Pac-Man, the active site of that enzyme fits the blue molecule. So now we need to put this all together. And we can start looking at our flowers. So a reminder that the colorless pigment molecule gets converted into a blue pigment molecule by enzyme A, and then into a red pigment molecule by enzyme B. And we have four flowers that we are going to take the genotype from and tell what the phenotype is. And the way that we're going to do that is through looking at which of the genes or which of the alleles code for which of the um, specific proteins. So for gene A, this flower has allele A. Allele A is the little enzyme that looks like a duck. So we know that those proteins are being made. They're functional. And so those colorless pigment molecules right here will be converted into blue pigment molecules. For gene B, we have allele B1. So we go back up to our table. We look at B1, it's the Pac-Man guy. We know that it's functional. So the shape of the active site fits the protein. So we know that those blue pigment molecules are going to be converted to red. So what you would draw inside the cell is, is this. Excuse my very fancy editing. I know that uh, most of you could do a better job than I can, but this is what I have right now. So gene A, we have that first allele, allele A1, which means we're making that duck-shaped molecule or that duck-shaped enzyme, which is converting the colorless pigment molecules into blue pigments. And our second gene, gene B, is that first allele, B1, the Pac-Man shape. So we draw our little Pac-Man here, and it's functional, so it's converting our blue pigments into red. Therefore, what color is our flower for type A, or sorry, type 1? It's red! All of those colorless pigment molecules are being converted to blue, and all of the blue pigment molecules are being converted to red. So the genotype here is functional, functional, because we have a functional gene A and a functional gene B, and the phenotype, or the physical trait, the thing that you see, is it's red. So go ahead and pause the video now and work through the next three types of flowers, come back and we'll go over the three together. Okay, are you ready to go through the next three together? I have covered up my answers so that we can go through one at a time. So let's look at type two, the flowers that are type two. So here we have gene A is allele A, it's the same shaped protein, so we can go and we can draw in the little duck-shaped enzyme. And we know that the colorless molecules are being converted into blue pigment molecules. Then we look at gene B. The allele that we have for gene B is B2. And if we look back up at our table, B2 is non-functional and it doesn't have an active site or the active site doesn't fit our pigment molecules. So that protein is being made. You still need to show that it's being made, but it is not changing the color of the pigment molecules. So our flower is going to be blue. Still pretty, but blue. Let's look at type three. Type three, gene A has allele A1, so still that little duck-shaped shaped enzyme, which is very happily converting colorless molecules into blue pigment molecules. The allele that we have for gene B is B3. So if we go back up to our table and look up at B3, B3 is that kind of thumbs up shape, but we know it's functional because the active site fits the blue molecule. So we draw in that molecule or that protein and we know that it is converting 
those blue pigments into red pigments. So what color is our flower? It's red. And last but not least is type four. So this one, the allele that we have for gene A is allele two, A2. Now if we go back up and we look at A2, that was the kind of tricky one. It had the stop code on at the very, very beginning, so no protein was actually being made. So we have no protein being made for enzyme A. So those colorless molecules stay colorless molecules. Now let's look at gene B. Gene B, we have allele B1. If we go back up to our table, B1 is Pac-Man. It is a functional protein. So we can draw that down here for our second part of the pathway and our functional protein exists. But can it convert colorless molecules into blue pigments or red pigments? No, it doesn't have an active site that fits the colorless molecule. It has an active site that fits the blue pigment molecule. If there aren't any blue pigment molecules, then it exists, but it's not doing anything. So our colorless molecules stay colorless and the flower is white. If you have any questions, please feel free to go back through this video as needed or contact your teachers if you um, need extra help. Otherwise, I hope this really helps you when you're figuring out how to determine phenotype from genotype. So again, those genotypes are the information in your genes and your phenotype is your physical trait. Stay tuned or coming up next really in the next uh, lesson is zooming into sickle cell. So we're going back to sickle cell with Miss McGinty and I hope you enjoy.